Our next uh, speaker also hails from the great continent of Africa. Let me introduce Dr. Manu Chandaria. He is the CEO of Comcraft Group and founding chairman of the East African Business Council and the Kenyan Private Sector Alliance. In 2003, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II conferred on him the Order of the British Empire in recognition of his promotion of Kenyan economic interests. His Excellency Honorable Mwai Kibaki, pre former president of Kenya, distinguished him with the honor of Elder of the Burning Spear in 2003 in recognition of outstanding service to the nation. We're also deeply grateful to Dr. Chandaria for being a great champion of this work for global peace and the Global Peace Foundation in Kenya. And so let us welcome to the podium Dr. Manu Chandaria. This one because I'm intimidated. <laughs> the Honorable Minister, I think that the one minute silence that we paid this morning sitting is not good enough for a person of Nelson Mandela. He was the heart beat of Africa. He represented wherever he went as Africa. Can I ask you all to stand up and give us a one minute silence, please? Thank you. Thank you. It's only three or four years back that Aruna and myself went and saw and met uh, Nelson Mandela, the president. He was very weak, but his mind was very alert. He spoke on every subject on Africa, whether it's Kenya, whether it's Uganda, whether it's community, whether it's poverty, he spoke on every subject. I was a trustee of the Pan-African Parliament. Pan-African Parliament means five members of parliament from each government, from each country of United, of Africa, meeting together uh, in, uh, in Johannesburg. And the man, when he spoke, and I asked him that I rem it reminds me of Gandhi and said, my philosophy is nothing but Gandhi. That was the man that we lost this morning. And Africa is that much poorer today than what it was yesterday. Dr. Moon, Mrs. Moon, Your Excellency, Honorable Tan Sidato, group, the minister, and the co-host of this conference representing the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Tansidato Paduka, co-chair, yesterday she was very, she was there and she talked, spoke quite nicely and I'll, I'll repeat her sometimes. Your Excellency, Haja Amina, wife of the Vice President of the great nation of Africa, Nigeria. <clears throat> His Excellency, the past president of Guatemala, Marco Cerezo. When Marco got up, I told Dr. Moon, you know, Dr. Moon, you and yourself and Marco looks like movie stars. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all the participants of this conference, 
It's with great joy and great pleasure that I join you at the fifth Global Peace Convention in Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia calls itself Malaysia Asia. It's truly, truly, it's Asia. You can see here Malays, you can see here Chinese, you can see here Indians, and you see many other nationalities in Malaysia. And they all live together with peace and harmony. And that's why they call Malaysia Asia. And I salute all the Malaysians who are here. <clears throat> It's under the leadership of His Excellency, the former President Mwai Kibaki and the Prime Minister Raila Odinga of Kenya. We were pleased to host Dr. Moon the second Global Peace Convention with delegates similar like 40 countries in Nairobi, in Kenya, 2010. And since then, we are here in Malaysia. We can see how far the Global Peace Foundation has come since then. And thank you, Dr. Moon. Keep on pushing it. <clears throat> on October 21st, 4th, 2013, means this year, I had the privilege of accepting the United Nations Day Award on behalf of the Global Peace Foundation in recognition of its efforts in Kenya. It also says that GPF is promoting culture of service, peace, and sustainable development. And to me, it was honor sitting in that big room with, I don't know, 56 nationalities and the, and the ambassadors and many others sitting over there getting a plaque for the Global Peace Foundation. I congratulate Dr. Moon and the team in Kenya who worked very hard to promote peace after the post-election. After the post-election violence of 2008, we had a number of meetings with the youth. And the epitome of that was in the January end when 2,000 youth came down to Nairobi for two days. And we spoke to each one of them. And finally, they went back. What was the result? In 2013, we had an election and not a single person died. And that was... <laughs> Dr. Moon, I salute your efforts. In a very small way, we begin, we begin in Kenya. And we found that it was a place where we needed to help and find the peace. And in 2013, it proved that by peaceful talking, by understanding each other, we can create peace. Our objective is to create and increase the cooperation between stakeholders from various sectors by adding value in the areas of social entrepreneurship and providing a platform that nurtures the culture of service. Though volunteerism and through volunteerism, character and creativity and skill development through youth entrepreneurship incubation centers. And every place this is becoming a necessity. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no development without peace. And there is no peace unless you have development. In urban slums of Africa, in many countries in Asia also, 
The common determined deterrent of development is the lack, lack of education, literacy, water, electricity. And I'm very glad that Global Peace Foundation has started the program of All Light Village Project, which first facilitates electrification in the villages, a gateway to peace and development. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, leadership today is taught worldwide. It is not leadership. In the classical business school that is taught. However, it gives you the tools. If you go to the school, they will give you the tools. But it does not make you a leader unless you put the tools into practice and you work for it. Build yourself a position of leadership and make a difference in a nation that you live in. Then you can be recognized as a leader. Youth unemployment, today not in Africa, but in most of the world, threats is threatening the peace and stability of many countries. In Kenya, for example, there are five million youth from secondary school leavers up to university graduates facing streets of Kenya. And it's estimated there will be 24 million Kenyan youths by 2030 if we are not very careful and do not build the country to assemble them and to take them in, that they will be also roaming the streets of Kenya. This is a huge danger. And this is not only for Kenya. Every country in Africa is facing this situation. The launch of Asia and Africa Peace Service Corp at the United Nations in Kenya <coughs> provides an opportunity where volunteers will work together to build peace and bring practical solutions to local communities. We can find all solutions, but unless the solutions are practical to those communities, those solutions are useless. Leadership is about making right choices of what is necessary to be done. To create more leaders of quality, Ken Africa Leadership Institutes and the Government of Africa chart a new vision, a new direction, new skills, and sharpen them to develop their capacity to make right choices, to see the continent move forward. Why I say this, now is the time for Africa. Because Africa is the last continent which is left out to be developed now. The region is sitting on a huge amount of human and mineral resources. Excellent land masses. Today we are talking about in Kenya, in Zambia, in Nigeria, in Ethiopia, everywhere, tracts of lands are available. And yet, Africa, many, many children in Africa go to sleep without a meal. You can find extremely hardworking people if you can make them to understand what hard work is all about. And there's a tremendous potential for development. There are 53 independent nations in a country of Africa. And yet, when we look deeply, the continent, we have seen millions of people in the last 50 years killed amongst each other. Kenya is just on the 11th of this month, will be completing 50 years of our independence. 
Kenya has not seen the types of killing that we have seen in other countries. But Africa, most of the countries are going through this kind of disturbances, killing, hate against each other, caste, religion. You know, it's unbelievable. 50 plus million people must have been killed in the last 50 years. Is this what we want? And that's why the motto of Dr. Moon, one family under God, is the only answer that we can say, hey, stop this killing. <laughs> Africa is poor. The question is, why is it so poor? <clears throat> Let me tell you the Malaysia, the Singapore, the Indonesia, the all, the, all what you call the tigers, their GDP 50 years was lower than Kenya. And yet, look at them now today. They're up over there and we're still Why is it so poor? Why do the majority of poor go to bed with one meal a day? Who is responsible for this? Is it the politics? Is it the lack of institutions? Or is it the lack of vision? Or it is the lack of transformative leadership? And that's why all the Africans who are over here today, please think about this, that what we need is transformative leadership. Leadership which can see out of the box. <clears throat> so I'd like to challenge you all, because today we have seen many of Africans present over here, to think out of the box, to find solutions, to give that little time to worry about the continent and turn the worry, just worrying is not good enough, turn the worry in some action. This will find and this will need really a fire in your belly. It cannot be done otherwise. There are successful people in Africa Today there are millionaires and billionaires in Africa. Very few, but there are. And I remember the quote of this man whom I was the dean of the Kellogg School of Business. And now he's the dean of INSEAD. And he said, from success to significance, from success to significance, or rather the journey from success to significance. And many of these people are successful, but only a few are able to make, or rather, a chance to make a difference in the society they live in. And success, only success, is as good as not having success unless you can make and touch somebody else's life and make a change in your society. I'd like to thank Dr. Yun Jin Moon for his vision, passion, and committed, supported by his wife, Mrs. Moon. Malaysians, congratulations for bringing this year's convention here and having all of us over here. For bringing us this one and a new level that you've shown here of tolerance with what you have with all kinds of people living in this country, congratulations to you. Now, Your Excellency uh, Haji Amina, yesterday, Tansri Paduka said, women are mothers, wives, sisters, daughters, and she forgot to tell us 
that there are also bosses. <laughs> now that reminds me, that reminds me, you, you know the cockroaches. Everybody, if they don't understand the cockroach, the cockroaches are afraid of rats, mouses. They are afraid of rats. And the rats are afraid of cats. And the cats are afraid of dogs. And the dogs are afraid of men. And men is afraid of women. And yet, women is afraid of cockroaches. <laughs> this all goes around about. Now, I see from here on this podium, I see more women than men. Come on, all the women say, yay! yay! No, no, that's not good enough, you women. Come on, say yay! yay! Now, that's the women power here. And I think that you can take guys like me and now Aruna just takes me, look at that. And she takes me around like this on her finger. <laughs> so I think if women, if you decide to make a change, change will be a possibility. Thank you for listening to me.